this video intended for educational purposes. Hey guys, it's Adam, aka Swimming Bird, and welcome back for another Minecraft 1.8 snapshot. This is 14W27B, and the big exciting new feature this week is... Hey. Hey, you're in my shot, little guy. What the heck? Alright, one rabbit stew coming right up. Charge! Oh, no, no! Uh, run away! Ah, oh, jeez! We'll get back at that deadly beast in a minute. But first, we're going to cover everything there is to know about the brand new rabbit mob. Now, originally we thought these guys might be an ambient mob like the bat, but they actually have a lot of uses. They've got eight different skins, including two special ones, three different drops, a bunch of different uses, and even one big negative to look out for. So let's get into it. Now, we're going to go through the skins one by one as we talk about the new features. This is the black rabbit skin. There he is. And below him is probably the most common drop, rabbit hide. Now, if you get four of these and you craft them together like so, you can get leather. So this is an easy way to get leather without needing a cow around. Next to him is the white rabbit, and down here is raw rabbit meat. Now, this heals the same amount of hunger shanks as raw chicken. It's uh, one and a half, but it won't give you that food poisoning, so it's a little nicer there. Now, if you cook it, you can heal two and a half hunger shakes. It's basically the same as chicken, but it could be a bit more prevalent if you find these guys out in the wild. Now, over here is the black and white skin, and below it is the sad lucky rabbit's foot. Now, these things can be used to brew potions of leaping. Now we can finally get jump boost without needing a beacon, which is really nice. You can get jump boost one and two. You can even make it into a splash potion. Splash your horse with it to make it a jump higher, stuff like that. Up here is the gold rabbit skin. I think I like this one the best. It actually blends in really well with sand. So I hope these guys actually spawn in the desert, because look at that nice camouflage. If they're not facing you, you might have a hard time seeing them. Right now, these guys don't spawn anywhere, but I'm assuming it'll be in plains and forests and different stuff all over the place. Over here, we've got the brown bunny. This is the default one, the one that the Mog Miner originally made. And below him is rabbit stew. I wasn't joking about the rabbit stew. This is a really good food item. It actually heals five shanks, but it's a bit more difficult to craft. You need a bowl, a baked potato, a carrot, cooked rabbit, and either type of mushroom. So it's a lot of stuff to craft. You can't stack it, unfortunately, just like mushroom stew. But the fact that it heals so much, it's the best food item in the game, basically. Now, over here is the salt and pepper bunny. It's, uh, it's a little brown to be too salt and peppery, but it looks cute nonetheless. And uh, that's the last of the six natural spawning skin variations. Before we get into special ones, I wanted to take a little detour from bunnies and talk about sheep actually have a food drop. Finally, you can get raw mutton, which will heal one shank of uh, hunger. It's basically the same as a cookie. But if you cook it, it will heal three. So it's the equivalent of like mushroom stew, a baked potato, that sort of thing. So it's not too bad for a food source, especially if you have tons of sheep around to get wool. So that's pretty awesome there. Now, this is the first special skin variation. If you name a rabbit toast, you will actually get this skin. And it's a tribute to user XYZNTV. His girlfriend had lost a bunny named Toast that had this skin. So the Mog Miner programmed that in as a little tribute. And it's a nice little unique skin there. The bunnies will magically transform into that regardless of what their skin color is. And you guys saw the last of the variations. This is the Killer Rabbit of Kerbanog. And these guys have a 1 in 1,000 chance of spawning in the wild. You can see they look quite a bit like the white bunnies. Now, if you look closely, you can see their mouth is actually a little pink and their eyes are blood red compared to the guys over here. The normal white one doesn't have as much of a defined mouth and its eyes are a bit lighter, but they look the same. So if you go within four blocks of these guys, you will know the difference between the two because this guy will actually attack you outright. On easy mode, it will deal two and a half hearts of damage if you have no armor on. On normal, it deals four hearts and on hard, as you saw, when I got killed there a minute ago, it deals six hearts of damage, so these guys are very tough. Now, if you play on peaceful, they will still spawn, but they will not be able to hurt you. They'll jump at you like he's doing right now to me, but they can't do any damage. He's a really cool little variation of the rabbit. I like that they added him in. He used to have a bloody mouth, but I think they removed that, maybe to make him a little harder to figure out. I think it's funnier if you can't tell the difference until you're being attacked, and maybe just to get the blood off the skin. I don't know. Either way, he's a very cool addition. Now, rabbits actually have to be tamed if you want to use them and breed them. You can hunt them normally, but they will run away from you. And uh, as you can see, I'll put some down here, and if I go into survival, they should. They're already running away from me a little bit, even on uh, normal mode. There he goes. He's trying to get away. They're hopping around. 
But if I grab a carrot here, these guys will actually try to come towards me and hop. You need to kind of sneak. They're based off of the ocelot the way they're coded. So they will actually try to come close to you and I can try to feed these guys and if we can get them right without scaring them off too much, we'll tame them and they will go into love mode and make some baby bunnies. They're very fidgety. These ones are kind of hopping back and forth. I'll try to spawn a few more and then I'll, I'll move away from them and see if we can get them to come towards me. There we go. Just like with ocelots, they're very fickle. You can tame them with a carrot, a gold carrot, or a dandelion. The dandelion is actually a reference to why the Mog Miner added the bunny in the first place. He was golfing and he saw a bunny on the course and the bunny actually ate a dandelion from his hand. So that's kind of cool. Now that this guy's tamed, he won't run away from me. He's pretty cool with me. Let's see if I can get another one over here and maybe we'll get these guys to enter love mode. Now right now, the carrot, the normal carrot is the only thing that will get them to come close to you, but you can still tame them and have them enter love mode using the other variations like the dandelion. Here they go, they're getting close. Some hot bunny on bunny action, there we go. And he's made a little baby. Now, I believe they can spawn multiple babies at a time. Just like real rabbits, they'll have like a litter and kind of propagate like crazy. And uh, <laughs> they're a little they're a little crazy when you get them going. I had a huge uh, field of them over here to demonstrate the big negative about these guys. Now, not only can they trample your crops if they get in there because they're hopping around constantly, but if I spawn a few in here, you'll see very quickly if mob griefing is on, these guys will just start destroying your carrots. They will eat them basically, but they'll kind of hang around there and then slowly your carrot patch will disappear. So look out if you have these guys near a farm because that is their one big negative. I've got some baby bunnies over here. I showed you the one, but you guys can see all the different little babies. And uh, there's the normal ones here and the toast one. But you can see there's even a baby of the killer rabbit. You can breed the killer rabbit and they'll actually, you can sort of tame them, but they'll still attack you and you can make babies with the killer rabbits and have them breed, but it's uh, it's a little risky because, like I said, they'll attack you in survival mode and they'll still go after you even in creative right now. So that's mostly it for the bunnies. I'd like to see them spawn all over the place. Maybe the skin variations will be different. Like I said, the desert one would be really cool to see in the uh, desert, you know, the gold skin here. But I'd like to see them add this much variation to some of the older mobs. I'd like to see, you know, maybe like a boar in the swamps, things like that. People have suggested that before. But it would be really cool to have this many skins for some of the older creatures as well. So let's quickly get into some of the other features this week. Now, NBT tags got a big boost. Instead of needing to use a comparator, you can actually test whether a command block is successful by using a special NBT tag called command stats. This will be very useful for servers and minigames and stuff to detect different things for scoreboards. Particles are a little different now. If I'm gonna slam down on this block, let's go up really high, and you know how if you drop down, you'll drop the particles everywhere slamming out. So you see how they actually kind of fan out a bit more. They've been made a little more useful. They fix some bugs about it, so you can see they'll kind of spread out in different patterns instead of just going in like a ripple effect. So that's pretty cool. Now over here, I've got these six blocks because this is an experimental feature that Mojang is working on, and they want feedback from you guys about if you like it or not. Now this will likely be optional in the future, but this is a feature that was in Optifine in the past. You can turn on natural textures in Optifine and you will get variations in how the top of the block is displayed. Now if I place a bunch of these, watch very closely. It's easy if you look at the corners. You can see it's actually rotating the top texture with all these different blocks here. It'll spin it around, kind of adding a bit of variation so it breaks up the monotony of a lot of the Minecraft textures. It's very easy to see on the TNT block because you can see the fuse actually spins around depending on which way the texture is. I know not everyone likes this look. Whenever I use Optifine, I actually keep natural textures on because I think it looks pretty cool. And like I said, it makes the world look a little more natural and less samey when the patterns of the top of the blocks are broken up. You can kind of notice it if you look along the grass here. It's not as samey, but I know a, a bunch of people are already saying they don't necessarily like it. So I feel like this will probably be an optional feature in, uh, in the future. We'll have to see what Mojang says about that, though. This is a feature creep, so we don't know whether it's gonna actually be in the game or not. Now, Debug Worlds actually got a few upgrades. If you watched the last snapshot, you saw Debug Worlds. They show every block in the game, every different state. Very useful for resource packs. Now, when you create them now, you can only be in spectator mode. They've basically defaulted to that. You can't change it. And they have all the different variations of redstone now, fire, tripwire, stairs, all that good stuff. And it doesn't repeat over and over, so it's a lot easier to see this is all the blocks and all the states in the game. You don't have to worry about, you know, whether 
there's uh, there's beginning and ending different spots. It's a lot easier to tell where they start and stop. And uh, F3, you can now actually see some different levels of stuff on the blocks. And uh, so like if a cauldron had water in it, it would tell you the water level, stuff like that. Block models, you can do different states and do the variations of textures easily now in there. And they pushed, they uh, did a few bugs. One of them was uh, you would be pushed around on horseback by other mobs. They could push you around instead of how they normally can, where you can't push other players in, uh, in normal gameplay. So that's been fixed on horseback. And mushrooms were losing their name if you named them with name tags if you sheared them and got mushroom from them. So uh, that's that's been fixed. But lots of cool stuff this week, mainly just a ton of the features for the little bunnies. We still need to get the sound effects for them. Look at them, they've almost devoured all my carrots. Jeez, uh, definitely batter down your uh, your parrot, carrot patches, your parrot catches, and uh, make sure these bunnies aren't getting in there. We, we still don't know where they'll spawn, but we will definitely see that soon, and they're definitely going to get sound effects in the future, so I'm looking forward to it. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you want to see more 1.8 news and 1.8 features, check out my other snapshot videos and news videos. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this. Maybe subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys next time for more Minecraft snapshots. Goodbye.